Welcome back to the Telosive EV Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Tesla logo, not the Telosive logo. They're entirely different. Don't sue me, Elon. Uh, please don't run into a Twitter rant with me like you did with Tori. How are you guys today? <laughs> Poor Tori. Better than Tori. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Tori, jeez. That's a Tom of Tori space podcast. So, come on. I know. Smiling with the a dark, tear down. The dark clouds of bureaucracy are going to be covering you. <laughs> <laughs> or lobbyists or something. <laughs> so, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, it's not EV related, but it's kind of Elon related. So I'm going to squeeze it into this show. Um, <laughs> Sir Lex Luthor, Jeff Bezos himself is no longer CEO. This is true. He's gonna Correct. Because he's going to be working on his space exploration. And, um, okay, well, he's not a sir. He's American. But Sir Richard Branson is trying to beat him to space nine days sooner. It's almost and, like DJ, and I recorded an entire podcast about this one topic, Randy. Did you listen well, to this amazing uh, podcast? I did not. No, <gasps> no. <laughs> well, everyone just, else should. I, I, I will, buddy, as soon as I get a link to that. All right, but I will, I will what, send you a link. where I'm tying it into Elon is it, it seems to me no one gave a flying Falcon 9 until uh, until SpaceX started, you know, doing their stuff. And again, I know EV, but it's all it's all Elon, right? It's just what what moniker does he want to rock today? Uh, rock I see it. I see. <laughs> There's a roadster in space right now. There so. is. So, it, a so it's relevant. A <laughs> it's just it's, it's interesting that Elon is a genuine uh, innovator. Because he he he's he's like another Steve Jobs. In two he's a weeks, better Steve Jobs. He's an innovator in two weeks. In two weeks, but okay. Now he's not good at execution, but my God, when he when he tries to move the needle forward, he gets all these billionaires involved to do the same thing, and uh, yeah, I, I I think I started thinking about space because you're talking about Tori, but um, it's just it's cool that. It, it, it this is a this is a ripple the the rock in the pond and the ripple here's a ripple of like the most powerful man arguably uh in corporate or actually in the world i would say uh jeff bezos walks away from his creation to go mm -hmm. do this thing that it seemed like at once upon a time only elon was focused on and uh to be fair blue origin was started three years earlier than uh spacex so why did nobody care hmm. about this until after SpaceX was having successful uh, well, because collaborations? Because Blue Origin has yet to do anything, basically. I mean, That's my done point. Like 15 suborbital tests. I don't care if, if a company was in existence in the 80s. If they, it, IBM was around before Apple, but... Um, <laughs> Randy, that's Rivian not... was founded in 1907. <laughs> <laughs> a delivery should be this month. Sometime. <laughs> Randy, that's I'm not, not sure very team when. space of you. You need to be more team space. I would, I would <laughs> say it's almost, it's almost like the Tesla effect where wh who's the next Tesla killer or what is the Tesla killer? So it's kind of like yeah. who is the SpaceX killer? None of them. And yeah, I'd say probably and none of them. Maybe. No major company really wants to enter a field, especially one like EVs, until someone else has proven it's feasible, profitable, or... or scalable yeah mm. so i felt like pre-tesla no one was really bothering with evs because they felt like there wasn't a way to effectively mass produce and sell a bunch of them so everyone was kind of like eh, maybe hydrogen maybe fuel cells i don't know we'll investigate other things and then uh tesla came along kind of showed everyone no you can't do it with electric so now everyone including uh dodge ram is like hey uh, we're doing EVs too. Everybody's doing EVs now. Everyone's everyone's waiting till their major brand announces their big <laughs> EV day, where they go through the whole spiel of what they're planning on, what they're gonna unveil, and everything. So Tesla kind of paved the way, sort of similar to how I think SpaceX paved the way. It's, everyone's like, "Oh, you can do that. All right, then I'll do it." I'm glad you brought I'm up Dodge, Dodge Ram. Ram. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Mike. Oh, I was just going to say Dodge Ram. Pretty cool that they're finally mm -hmm. coming out with something that's EV. Um, it makes me excited for being a 1500 Ram owner to see an oh, EV. Oh, that's right. Mm. I forgot. You have a Ram, huh? Yeah. So You like it? What's its name? <laughs> its name is Truck. <laughs> oh, Truck. truck. 
Hello, truck. Very original. Goodbye, Very original. truck. That's like that's, that's like one. having a goat named truck or a dog named horse. Confusing That'd be stuff. Very confusing. Yeah. But it's a truck named truck. Yeah, but no, no it's, it's a good a, truck, a, and it makes me Ram. excited for right. what Ram is doing with the fifteen hundred because we've seen what Ford's done with the uh, F one fifty, and it's really mm-hmm. just kind of a reskin, a very bad reskin of what the original <laughs> gas product was. Um, but with Ram, at least... Minimal effort. At least with the concept that they're showing, hopefully they carry it through. It does look different compared to most traditional trucks. It's very much like the uh, the old Tesla pickup concepts that people were making, where it's like it's got mm. the typical Model X grill kind of type of thing, and then a little bit swoopy in a way. Swoopy. Mm. <laughs> swoopy. It's... I think what they describe it as the greenhouse is integrated with the body, or at least it's a little bit more seamless with the body. So Hmm. it does look neat. I really hope that they go through with it, and maybe they take some cues from the Cybertruck and make a pretty cool product for, I think, 2024, in which they're aiming for a 500-mile range vehicle, which is a lot better than at least what Ford's trying to do right now, or even Rivian. For sure. Yeah, I hope they deliver on that it's definitely better than nothing which is i guess what we had yeah. a few days ago where they had no plan but this definitely feels late but, uh, it is, but is it better how, than the cyber truck though no well we have no we don't know specs no, it's besides not. <laughs> 500 mile range but i do think are we all in agreement that 500 mile range cyber truck will probably be out by then oh is that a safe two weeks two weeks after the ram comes out <laughs> Ooh, 2024 does feel kind of delayed compared to you know lightning trying to come out next year rivian trying to come out next week and cybertruck co- trying to come out next year uh hummer coming out uh i think next year slash end of this year so there's going to be a lot of ev pickups by then uh lordstown will probably be a distant memory and <laughs> What will happen to the Ram? I, I think it would be good because Ford took the approach of let's try to make oh this God. as appealable as possible to the mainstream of pickup truck owners, the people who like their F-150s. They will still like this. And I don't know. like They've got a huge market for that. But Ram, if they can take it in a different direction where it's a bit more noticeable of a futuristic design approach like the concept uh they teased that would be far more fascinating to me because just chucking some big batteries in a f-150 design is like mm, less exciting but i guess we need that too for the average pickup owner mm. yeah you have any thoughts on the ram randy don't ask me i'm so scared to say anything that the whole thing <laughs> okay. is just going to shut down um I'm going to skip this one until I feel confident that my production is. If anybody's watching, Nick, you're going to have. <laughs> I am just zooming in and out. And the whole it, the whole thing is just effed. So. Randy is center staging. Yes, Randy is just <laughs> <Okay>. center staging. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really have anything specific to say about the Ram because I'm not going to get it. Ever. Mm. So. I have a question for Mike because he is a Ram owner, and I know that uh, his wife's main attraction to the Cybertruck was, of course, 500 mile range, which is good for towing, and she likes big pickups and feeling like she's driving a tank on the road. So, is there something the with Ram a, with a yoke would though. be able to offer? Yeah, no, she hates the yoke, <laughs> but she would there be something the Ram could be able to offer besides a full steering wheel that would convince you guys that would be a better buy over a cyber truck i'm not too sure thinking about it the main problems would be having a yoke um but uh, like the con is the cyber truck has a yoke the pro is that there's the supercharging network and that's very mm-hmm. nice and reassuring when you're on a road trip that you know wherever you go there's usually going to be a plug-in um, sure. But this thing is coming later. It's coming in 2024 versus 2022. Um, right. Along with that, this is their first EV, so there's going to be a lot yep. of issues. Yep. Um, software is definitely going to be a concern. And along with that, um, yeah, I, I guess it's more of the push of gas right now. 
Um, she mm. really hates paying $70 to $80 at the pump just to fill up the car so that she could go somewhere. I would, too. Yeah. That sucks. Mm. She cannot wait for the Cybertruck. That's a lot. Yeah. It's growing quickly, too. Exactly. And it's going to keep on growing with what Doesn't Congress Gas is doing. Doesn't gas still have a cap at, like, 90 or 95 or 99 or something like that? They have a ca- when the Not only here. <laughs> when I went cross country <laughs> and uh, a long time ago, I, I drove a U-Haul and I was driving this gas guzzler and I stopped at the pump and I was like, oh, I got to fill up. And I started, you know, uh, pumping gas and it just like stopped after a number. It wouldn't do it anymore because uh, if fear that someone is like, you know, using your credit card or your debit card or whatever, and there's a there's a, a fail stop that happens that just like. Nope, we, we cut it off here, and you have to reuse your card again, just in case, you know, you drove away and somebody else came in and grabbed your pump before it stopped charging. So uh, I was like, oh, man, U-Hauls are expensive. And then I was talking to some people who have these, you know, pickup trucks and stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, no, that's normal. Like, I, I would feel easily 85, 90 uh, on, a, on a, any given weekend. I was like, what? I... I used to panic about forty dollars with like my Honda Civic or something. So that <laughs> blows my mind. Dollars. Forty dollars. <laughs> forty dollars. And yeah. I was like, oh, forty forty dollars. Yeah. Fully subsidized. Fully subsidized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. We, uh, they've, I think, since changed that. I do remember that happening way back in twenty ten or something. But when we were helping my parents move, we filled up the u-haul and the pickup truck from one pump and the total charge was like 150 dollars or something for for both trucks but that's expected yeah it's it's weird to see the pump go that high you know they've got the numbers on there for a reason it goes into (laughs) triple digits no because that does happen (laughs) i wonder if you could get to i don't think a supercharging session ever will get there hopefully not i've seen some that are horror stories where it's like 50 bucks that people are being charged but that's because of idle fees and such idle fees yeah, is, yeah it's not because sense. of well eh, there was my, my cousin was telling me that it was costing tesla owners a pretty big portion of their budget to charge up during the whole ice storm that they had there where the oh, right. energy companies were or company was scrambling around trying to find energy and yeah they're saying like oh it, it costs like 50 dollars or more to fill up your tesla and i'm like Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's because you guys just had a big cold ice storm that <laughs> just ruined everything. But on average, it's a lot cheaper to fill up an EV with electrons than it is to fill a gas car with. Oh yeah, gas particle, gas particles, particles, <laughs> gas pim particles. particles. I guess that kind of works in a way. Um, did you guys catch that lawsuit of the guy that was angry because he bought a Tesla with unlimited supercharging, but then they charged him idle fees? <laughs> <laughs> No. no. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Why is this news? Oh, that's funny. No, I did not see that. <laughs> I think he was trying to catch him on a technicality of like saying you could never charge me for plugging in and I was technically charged because I was plugged in. But oh. yeah, I, I was just like, there. everyone was saying the same thing basically. Just because you get unlimited supercharging doesn't mean you get to... Leave your car at a supercharging <laughs> stall indefinitely. <laughs> if they didn't do that, that would mean you could like permanently park your car at a supercharger. Have a like, permanent assigned spot or something. For like months, <laughs> and they could never bill you for it. <laughs> what happens if you sneak in and steal that guy's spot? Does he just get angry and move to the next bar? Does he just ruin your car? Well, it's not legally his, I guess. But that does make me wonder. If you just had a bunch of money and you wanted to run an experiment... A very expensive. Idea. Here's a good Mr. Beast video, Jimmy. Ooh, you can there you take go. this one from me. Last to what leave. What if you leave a Tesla plugged in at a supercharger for like weeks? Will the idle fees continue? Or do they just like, stop it at some point and deactivate the car? Do they cut off like gas pumps used to? They or? just send a tow truck. <laughs> I'm of the yeah. opinion that the same people who come around to service uh, the 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 individual stations when something's out of whack and it needs maintenance. If something was there, noticeably being like, I, there has to be something communicating with Tesla servers and stuff like that. These mm-hmm. same people uh, would uh, just be, yeah. These, hang on, dang, no, my. Uh, anyway, so that's my that's my thought. It would have Nick. That I, I have to break fourth wall for a second. Um, evidently, I'm out of memory on my memory card. Don't know how that wow, happened. Wow, Randy. So. 
Randy yeah. is is coming here with the production issues. Yeah, I have to on take a look. Do you well, have audio on this? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I know everything's working, but uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Nick recommended um, as a uh, redundancy, just record here, so that way, if anything happens with the FaceTime call mm-hmm. or OBS, and I'm like, okay, because audio is fine, so he can at least synchronize. Like, that's a good idea. So I start recording, and I just got flagged right now saying that um, I'm out of memory now. I'm out of. I have memory. redundancy. I have no redundancy. I'm doing everything. Without radar, pure vision. No, shame, pure vision. <laughs> shame, pure vision. You like Neanderthal, it. so barbaric. Admit, I'm impressed. Tesla vision seems to be working pretty well thus far. Of all the videos I've seen, even in the rain. Shocking. Oh, and shocking. My goodness, gentlemen. Of all the safety tests I've been watching, it looks looks pretty good. I mm. need to talk to you guys about some rain. Oh, okay. okay. I bet radar is the problem. Like grandson, the rain last night, or actually all day yesterday, but this happened last night. Uh, we're going through a tropical storm, or we were. Mm-hmm. And then I walk out today, not a cloud in the sky. I'm like, what storm? What's that like? I don't, dude. <laughs> you just have. I have no through. idea. <laughs> this is this is no, the most no, Colorado no. weather. Uh, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, and and it will okay. statistically Can't change. Confirm. Something will change. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm anti-weather. Uh, last night, I get in my car to go do something, and I was trying to beat the storm, and it, it didn't happen. And it came down so hard that my car was like, we're not doing any of this. You're driving. I'm like, okay. Okay. So I just grabbed the, the air code on the like, screen uh, saying, don't even think about it, bud. Yeah. Uh, when, when I went to... You know, whole display boom, boom, says don't boom, panic. Boom, boom, boom. Don't it's panic. just like no, uh, uh, I forget the word. Not inclement weather. It's just like uh, uh, poor weather conditions. We're not doing this. So as it's just driving, it just like it took itself out of out of FSD. I'm like, how dare you? I own you. And it was like, <laughs> all the beeps go off. It says you're driving. It refunds you for full self driving. Yeah, <laughs> it just does. Everything. It's like, you know, I don't want any part of this because you're about to die. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I, I had a tornado warning that was coming down that Amber Alert goes off on my phone saying, you need to take shelter right now. I'm like, oh my God, am I dying right now? Is that, Is that what we're going to do today? Nah, I don't feel like it. I got plans tomorrow, recording the podcast. So uh, my car <laughs> just was like, we're not doing none of this. You are. So I, I had to go back to, you know, Drew barbaric days of. Yeah. <laughs> and the windshields are going yeah, like this off Jay quick Leno. and I can't see did nothing. Did you have auto wiper on or did you have it on the highest I setting? I had auto wiper and it's just doing this it the whole time. It does that even when it's sprinkling. <laughs> yeah. So. And I'm just like, <laughs> my my anxiety, my watch is like, you need to calm down. I'm like, I thought I turned you off. Why are you? T- <laughs> <laughs> the watch is checking his pulse. Oh, man. It was bad. So, radar or vision or camera, whatever, none of it was having it for the the, the water I was driving through last night. So, um, that was a thing. And poor Brittany <laughs> coming <laughs> with her tiny little, tiny little yard. I mean, you guys have seen it, uh, but <laughs> she's coming home from work. And she tells me, she's like, I need you to stay on the phone with me because I don't know if I'm going to be okay making it home because oh, no. she, wow. she got the Jeez. same warning. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm driving home and I have her on the speaker. I'm like, yeah, the car won't uh, won't drive itself. She goes, hey, how, okay, shut up about that right now. I am literally being thrown around. Okay, can we pause about your car driving it? I'm like. Oh, Honey, the car won't drive itself. Like, the car won't I'm drive scared. itself. Will you, have, will you stay on the phone with me? The car won't drive itself. And she goes, I need you to stay on the phone because I literally might flip right now. The winds are so aggressive. I'm like, oh, okay. It's pretty oh, bad. Okay. Goes, A semi just pulled over. So I'm scared. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So Was it a Tesla, Tesla semi? Uh, you know, even if we could tell, visibility was so bad, you <laughs> all you could see were the uh, hazards going off. It was crazy, well, I bet dude. It's- I bet it's comforting to know the Cybertruck has no windshield wipers, right? <laughs> mm. Mm. They were like, we decided automatic wipers this were so fine. bad, we just took them off. We this is fine. I'm okay these cars with the are events for California. We don't, we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. What is weather? I, oh, my God. That's why I'm so desperate for that update image. I'm just like, where are they going to put those things? That's a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying mm. to imagine 
uh, putting it at the base of the windshield, and it just doesn't look right. It looks yeah, so bizarre. I, I still think it's gonna have something sides? to do with the front. Like I think the front can like kind of pop up or a little pivot bit. Pivot up. Yeah, just like pivot up a little bit and then reveal the wipers and have them you know retract when you're not using them to keep that clean Cybertruck Blade Runner aesthetic. But hmm. I would love that. Yeah. In what did you say? Sure. There are no. Lessons. I was thinking, what about the sides? Kind of like a semi. Whoop whoop. I'm still in favor with the edges. laser beams. Hmm. I, I don't know how that works, but it sounds cool. Yeah, I'm in favor of laser beams, but they're still not legally. I'm in favor acceptable. of laser beams attached to their freaking heads. <laughs> okay, works well enough for me. Calm down, Mister Powers. As long as, yeah, as long as there's a way for the, they're just gonna co- cover it in hydrophobic coating. They should have like wind hitting the windshield so the air conditioning fast. goes out the the car <laughs> onto the windshield the hvac yeah. goes in and out and it blows all the air off very efficient we're know, saving the so climate power. we're reducing global warming you thought the hummer was bad <laughs> you've seen nothing bad <laughs> doesn't the hummer have 3 wipers i don't know sounds like something about the hummer, hummer would on do the, on the back end the no, I'm talking, uh, I watched a What's Inside video on the electric Hummer, and on the front, the windshield is so wide <laughs> that they had to put a middle wiper. I, I haven't I'm seen thinking, that. I, I've, I've seen that, that on gas cars. It was I, interesting. I haven't seen it on the Hummer, but gas cars, I've seen that. In. Yeah, I've seen that on a I saw one recently when I was driving. Mm. It, was, it was bizarre. It looked like uh, a car from Monsters, Inc. <laughs> have, like, all the extra wipers yes. going across. It's true. I saw the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I can't help but notice that you're holding your rocket in your hand. <clears throat> yes. What's that about? Is it his rocket? <laughs> I mean, it's not nothing to do with EVs, but... Uh... Is it a sponsor? No. Are you like getting paid the longer you have it on mm, camera? You're no. sponsored by SpaceX. Holding your rocket in your hand? I'm, Nicholas, I'm we are recording right now. I'm improving my audio quality, guys. Come on. Got to get oh. some more ASMR. Oh, I see the cable. It's a microphone. Oh. oh. He thought he was just talking I was genuinely curious, like the whole time. Like, So anyway, guys. I didn't see the mic at all. <laughs> so let's talk about space. I don't know. Why? Is this pot product placement? <laughs> this is my microphone Drew. now. Drew just. <laughs> Drew just I gave love that microphone. Much better audio quality. I can hear. Mm. It's See, almost Randy's like- just determined to turn this into a space podcast, and I'm determined to keep us in between the lines. No pun intended. <laughs> with autopilot. <laughs> Mike has scotch but, tape. Wow. Scotch. How do you guys feel about uh, Elon saying we're getting the beta? Today, <laughs> mm. as of today, hang on a second. I'm gonna check my phone. Yeah, I'm waiting for uh, a well, software not, update. Today push. is, I mean, today by the time people are listening to this. Yeah, I'm waiting for a software push. <sighs> Elon really promising FSD again. I didn't. He learn his lesson last time two weeks ago, and the two weeks before <laughs> that, and the two weeks before that, and the two weeks before that. I thought he was. I thought he was embracing the meme. He was when he said Starship uh, was going to Mars in two weeks, and mm-hmm. then he provided an update saying that the Model Three and Y, once the FSD gets its wide release, keep in mind that's separate from Beta Nine. Beta Nine is what's coming out today. Uh, but that's for the limited people who are already on the beta. I don't think that's the wide release. Um, but he said Model 3 and Y should get a UI update. Um, and he didn't give a timeline in that tweet. And I was like, I hey, saw. maybe he learned his lesson. That's great. Thank you, Elon. And then like two days later, he's like, uh, Saturday. And then in a month or so, I'm like, oh, my God, Elon. Never mind. He didn't learn. <laughs> he just forgot to include the timeline in the last reply. Which Saturday, I'll though? Be, I'm going to be really Which honest Saturday? with you guys. This Saturday. I'm just said, glad that Elon, um, him saying that stuff, does not affect the stock anymore. I, it, when he was first running his mouth. Does it? I'm looking at it. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I track it. When he's when he tweets some nonsense, I go, I jump on uh, Tesla's uh, stock, and i just like, what, what's happening to it right now? No, business as usual. Before One it, could argue it should be going up, but isn't because of those tweets. Before, it would go up and then very promptly drop, and uh, I was like, you got to stop talking, man. You just got to stop talking. And now it's just like, oh, it's business as usual. In fact, it's 
as rec- it's doing well today it, as of recording this song. It's almost like we've just stopped caring about what Elon said. I think about six months ago, all of us here would have said if Elon says something, you know, it's on good authority that, you know, they're working <laughs> on it or they're thinking about it or that it might happen. But I think at this point now we all realize what Elon has been trying to tell us for a long time, that Twitter is literally just a joke and everything he says there is a joke. Maybe. I, I do think we do care about what he says because he says stuff like Cybertruck will have rear wheel steering, which is like the first bit of Cybertruck news that we've had in a while. Will it though? That's huge. Will it though? I love that. <sighs> what if it doesn't? But it <laughs> what does. He says it comes in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say two weeks on this one, so I, yeah. I'm buying He also said that the design's finalized, so this is stuff that they've just been keeping in a drawer tucked away somewhere. I I hope so. I hope that's the case. Do you guys think they're purposely waiting to reveal the design for when, like, it's their get out of jail free card? Like, when something they maybe predict might not be well. (laughs) Hey, FSD's. Yeah, if something happens, Elon cursed somebody out, FSD got scrapped, or, or, or they're like, hey, uh, we're going to cancel the single motor variant of the Cybertruck. No, but here's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks so cool. Yes, but the new design requires no single motor. Randy, you know, that is like that, like, such a smart business move. They'd be stupid not to do that, but I know Tesla's not thinking about that. So, Tesla, <laughs> listen to Randy. I think that's a great idea. That's... I've never heard that theory pitched, but it makes perfect sense. I would do that, too, I, <laughs> if I had some kind of big news to drop. But I was like, Elon's going to do something in the next couple months. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe we're going to wait till the you know, Starship orbital test ends in a fiery death that <laughs> crashes over no. Africa or something. No, no, when that, that happens, <laughs> it's that they're like, hey, Cybertruck update. And all the Tesla fans are like, <gasps> oh, oh, honestly, oh. guys, the, uh, my, the, my, re- how to feel. my reasoning for that, thinking, uh, thinking that would be is because logically, there's, I feel like there's no other reason why they, kept, they keep waiting. We've already went through an earnings call where they could have revealed it. Uh, I feel like, uh, I'm trying to think logically, like, why else would you hold back unless strategically, maybe, like, I'm going to keep this in my back pocket because we're not ready to launch anyway. So what's the point of hyping everybody out when we can use it as our get out of jail free card? And I'm like, yeah, that, that would make sense to me. I would do that. I may have done that before in other variants. <laughs> it does give them get out of jail free. But what definitely makes more sense to me is they're just uh, – not ready to yeah. bring it to market and they've got insane amount of demand for it already so they're like why why even bother we we've got way too many orders the tracker now i think is over a 1.1 million so my they're goodness like, wait we're gonna be back ordered for years but true. I, I did. uh real question though actually oh, uh, no this is How about a fake question, question. This is this is a oh well, it could be fake. This is still open for I, you. Asked my father-in-law a fake question. I love it. <laughs> um, Kangaroo. Why powers. not? Why why not? It, like who cares if if it's like oh we're still behind or whatever. If we get Rivian this month, if we get if we get everything start now more and more, Ford Lightning's a thing. Why not now talk about it? seeing that everyone else is is showing their stuff and and some of it has presidential backing and all these things that like even though we we all know an end of year right so if if anything else just to just to show relevance in that sector of it why not show it still who cares Mm. if 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 we still got some time Rivian is ready to, to ready to go, and they're showing what it looks like. That nothing to the imagination with the Ford Lightning, and we're seeing many, many more, uh, not just concepts, but then like, no, we're ready to do this, we're ready to do this. And I, I, for me, I felt like it was time to show Cybertruck the final design after Ford stepped up and and did this whole thing with the president and and showed its design because now it's like if anybody's gonna. Has. M- much Mark, more influential yeah add, sure Super. but but from from an industry standard like you have you have you have the you know government backing of this and support of it is pretty legitimizing it 
for for everybody and it's ford so it's like yeah if they're gonna do it all right tesla sh show them that that new kid energy let's go go d bring it on out you know but alas i mean it could be the lucid one. effect right lucid says we've got the lowest drag coefficient tesla responds with no we do or lucid says <laughs> we've got the largest range and tesla says no we do so when Rivian comes and says, hey, look, we've delivered the first EV truck, maybe that's when Tesla says, yes, but look at ours. Yeah, but, <laughs> look at ours. <laughs> but ours is better. So, uh, But I, I have to agree, there's not a great reason in my mind. I have yet to hear one. Uh, it, it would be, in my opinion, much smarter to get people's expectations in check if it if it's going to have side view mirrors, windshield wipers, no door handles, rear wheel steering. Just getting people up to spec on what the production model will be like sooner rather than later is is a good idea. So I, I don't have a good answer. I don't know why they're waiting. I think uh, as soon as basically the design is final, you should probably uh, keep people up to date so that they don't go into next year thinking it's going to look exactly like the prototype and then the real thing comes out and the mirrors look a little weird or the wipers kind of throw off the front edge and you're going to have all these people saying but i wanted the prototype look it looked better like that is it's this aluminum yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's aluminum but, you know just get get people comfortable with what the actual thing will be like as soon as possible but i think model y didn't really get this the configurator and the site updated until like a month or two before deliveries they Ge waited quite january a, they got quite a the while. rim update and before right. that i think in december they got the autopilot update and then oh yeah that's right it used when they first unveiled the model y black was still the free color that mm. and then autopilot didn't come good times with it. autopilot wasn't included back then yeah yeah so they updated that side of the page in december and then in january they were like oh by the way it's ahead of schedule and that's when they said deliveries mm -hmm. in march so I, the model y was so similar though to the unveiling that i didn't feel like it yeah. needed to be besides the tailgate but the tailgate change was just so minimal that no one would yeah, really notice really it went from model to x me it's to not... model three in a way right to me it's the difference between that and like no door handles is like major that's like a big change people i think want to know what they're getting into if it's something stupid you know that might change someone's mind if you, yeah. if you have like a a touch trackpad like the roadster that might turn a bunch of people off and could it be that we don't know all we know is no door handles so uh as soon as you can keep people in the loop about what you're thinking the better yeah so i agree what do you think Nick? On, on the note of color you 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 got the midnight uh or the space whatever midnight right mike midnight silver metallic midnight silver midnight metallic. silver that's what's called yeah silver, okay um knowing what you know now just in general like how it looks and stuff like that chrome delete all mm. included if the black was still the free free variant the color of it would you have gone stuck with the black no no, the wife, immediately, that very day that we saw it, we speculated, of course, that the colors were just going to be the same. There wasn't going to be new colors because the three shared the same colors as the S and the X. So we're like, okay, it's going to get right. these colors. Except for Which silver. One we choose? <laughs> yeah, except for silver. Well, silver was gone at that point, I believe. Rip silver. And so I'm going to look up if there's a silver Model Y someone's made. Hmm, maybe. I, so. I, I saw a beautiful uh what was it mclaren orange model three the other day nice that ooh, someone nice. Did. i'm like ooh, that's beautiful um no it, there was always a choice for at least me and my wife between the blue and the gray and that that's was mainly true. fueled by it's gonna get dirty because we have horses and they're gonna kick up dust and yeah. even if it's not outside we're gonna live in an area that's gonna be dusty eventually so we need something that can when not um have too many fingerprints on it too many sure. smudges, and it can hide dirt real well and still look clean. And when you ordered your, when you pre-ordered it, oh no, I guess because you got it same day, or you you put in the order and, and very, very quickly got your Model Y. That was on that, yeah, I mean, in summary it was, we ordered March 2019 a Midnight Silver Metallic rear-wheel drive Model Y. Then we had to change it. That never happened. <laughs> no. Well, then we changed it in, I think, December because they added autopilot and it just decreased the price of the car. So it's like, 
okay, we just reconfigure for a price decrease on our car. So we're saving money by reconfiguring suite. Right. And mm-hmm. we probably don't change our place in line because we're right next to the factory. And then January comes around, we have to change the rims, and also it has to be all-wheel drive now. And then when it came to actual delivery, t- yeah, basically delivery day, it was we don't have your rims because mm. we only have two Model Ys here because we're not making any more because of the pandemic. So you get a choice between this VIN and this VIN. And it's like, mm. okay, well, they're the same car, so just give me the one that's less scratched up. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> When all that happened, uh, the I guess in, initial so your initial modification, the one where uh, at the end where it's like okay now autopilot and it's had a decrease and that was when you're pretty much locked in. Uh, was was black still the default free color or was it white at that point? I think white, white. changed around December. Okay. Yeah, I think unpopular opinion just because your response felt like my response in some way too, but opinions change. I see it. I see it out here too. I like the black on black with the Chrome delete and everything like that. Mm, there, I there, love it too. There, there is something Batman about it that I just it's all dark. Yeah. I, like with, the door handles just kind of disappear. Windows, dude. Oh yeah. And they changed their, 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 uh, the Tesla T, uh, and they made it like a, a very like crimson dark, but still, like it's a light color, but it's a, it's a dark tint of red, and hmm. I was like, "That is so cool!" <laughs> and I, if I could do it all over again, right now, I would pay the extra and actually go for the black variant with the with the factory Chrome delete because that looks really nice. And uh, this I was is gonna sc- say, Randy, there's a real cheap way you can do this to your Model just, Three. Just, you just rip a- off the green. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> you have a black car. No, I'm gonna get my money's worth forgot. out of it. I still got. They say I got at least two more years with it, and I'm I'm cool with it. But when nice. the time comes, I will rewrap it with uh with the, the coating wrap, just, and I will make it. Just get like a a vinyl bat Batman symbol, like the the yellow, yellow one. one. Put that on your hood. Brittany, there's would a guy in my town to that, that has that. She she like my inside thing with superheroes and stuff like this. Nick did his little live stream yesterday, and I was like, Lex Luthor's my favorite superhero, but. Uh, real superhero. superheroes, superheroes, and stuff like that. I would be uh, Batman. Everybody in my circle, like I'm the, I'm the uh, Batman. I'm the DC's Iron Man. So just throw money at it and fix it, whatever. But uh, <laughs> if I could, I used to have like Batman themed everything. And this scene, the the this model, it was a Model Y. It was a Model Y, all blacked out with the red little thing on there, and and. I just got Batman vibes, like Christian Bell driving his like very tactical uh, variant of it, because he did something cool with his rims too. It was, it, a lot of things were just like the accessories were customized. The, he didn't change the paint. He just like I want different rims. I want to make my logo, the icon, the Tesla thing like that. And it was just cool customization. Tesla, do this. Let us let us paint and have some fun with it. Like at least bring back silver, something, or totally. Take off all the colors altogether. That whole yes. I know it's dense easy, but that Aluminum. was that, it's cool. Sadly, Let's that's cyber. If it that's the role of Giga Berlin, which is actually that's what I was conveniently say. is if there is yeah. going to be it's coming online paint, apparently in September. So Q3, we're finally getting made in Germany model wise. Uh, are you sure? Where'd you hear that? Uh, ooh, I don't have a source with me right now, but I saw it oh, on okay. some news article <laughs> and or Twitter. I forget. Because they are importing made in China model wise to Europe. Mm-hmm. Well, to be fair, August and September. On that. It seems like the, they're very high. It seems like yeah, the factory sure. is completeish, at least enough to where they could actually make things. But it's very close. Um, the only thing that's stopping them is legislation and politics. So the only thing pretty to much. Fear I still fear think. Itself. I still think that September they can achieve that. At least wherever I saw this information. I guess take it with a grain mm-hmm. of salt. But yeah, I think, Randy, that's where we get all the beautiful things of different colored Teslas finally coming out, or at least in Europe, and maybe it finally gets ported over to Fremont I, whenever Fremont gets a break to shut down. In five years. Yeah. <laughs> in two weeks. Break. So Ber- uh, Berlin would two be weeks. the uh, spot. That'd be the popping spot. That'd be the popping spot. Because they got the next gen 
paint Ugh. shop before everybody. Yeah, they get oh, so, yeah. And they're testing it. There's uh, some interior shots people have of uh, bodies that have been painted. It's not a color they currently have. I don't know what color it is. It's like a weird dark yellow or something, but they're definitely that, messing around with paint that's not available now. So nice. Sure. I don't pretend to know a ton about car painting, but one of my family members is a car enthusiast guy, and he told me a little bit about why they why they paint things in bright vibrant colors when they're first setting up uh paint shops like even just like indie paint shops like uh when you first get it set up when you're practicing with new materials or a new layout or even new lighting conditions you want a real vibrant color um that will show the imperfections very well and uh that's hmm. I, I I did see that kind of vibrant color, and I was like, ah, I bet you that's what they're doing. Really? They're, they're getting the paint shops ready. Is that how you define vibrant? Well, under yeah, the correct like, lighting. Oh. Yeah, they could be doing it outside the factory. Well, Nick, well, where I are they going to start saying lighting? I'm not going to question your lighting knowledge. <laughs> yeah. as, I'm, as I'm as I'm using the wrong ones for the bokeh tree today, but you know. it's okay. Oh You're well, fine. I. I look forward to seeing these next gen painting thing. I don't want to talk out of turn or nothing, uh, and I think it's too early for it to anything be solidified. But um, there's an air force. There's three air force bases in Germany, and uh, we have some good friends that are stationed out there. And we we're waiting for uh, the pandemic to lift for those guys because uh, Germany is very strict right now. And uh, we were planning uh, to stop out there anyway to go see friends, and we have. Uh, a voucher from when we were supposed to go to the UK and that didn't happen. So we, Brittany and I agree that, all right, let's go to Germany uh, as our uh, Europe vacation uh, in maybe early 2022. If, you know, God willing, everything works well and everything's open and everything's just functioning again. Uh, as soon as that happens, we want to um, go to Germany. It's, the Air Force bases are not near Berlin, though. So, I would like technically to neither is Giga Berlin, but <laughs> true. Yeah, but I mean, like <laughs> it's closer to. I think it was um, the it, other side. Yeah, it's it's like down. It's on the southwest side. Is one of where yeah. one of the major bases is at that we would go to. Um, I would like to time this around selfishly i would like to time this around we i can go see the see the uh factory and uh just, just a factory connoisseur over there austin fremont berlin it's like in fanny stones Shanghai? on randy's glove he's already gotten fremont mm. he's gotten texas <laughs> now he's gonna and get what did it cost me <sighs> everything yeah, and, and he he's snaps gonna... his fingers in FSD beta is delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Half of FSD beta is delayed. I would love to see yep. this factory. I did not know. I, I knew this was going to be like the new, like the thing. I com had no idea about the paint. And so, like, aesthetically, that that's the one thing that we can get excited for that's cheap, all things considering. Like, it's just, ooh, something new. It's like getting a new iPhone that's not new, but ooh, now it's in purple. Ah! You know, like th that's how I get excited about. Like, I want to go see it anyway. But if I, I want to see, see it too, if I can see paint, my wife's I, uh, I, best friend lives in Germany, nice. and uh, she was you met her. She was there at our wedding. Mm. Um, one of the twelve people who made it, and she's uh, I think interning for a EV company. I forget. It's not Tesla, but I was gonna say Tesla probably vw or something like that but she's in the field and she she was the one who when we first talked to her she was more interested in hydrogen and then i was like <laughs> no but now Silly she's girl. more into the ev stuff so i'm like yeah I would, I would love to check out berlin eventually hey speaking of vw do you guys hear about that lawsuit that they got mm-hmm them and no, Audi and Is Porsche and bmw and daimler yep. illegally yep. colluding and this... slowing the development and wait, adaption wait, of up. clean energy technology. Yep. What? Yep. Tell I me about this. I thought that was an old headline. Tell me about this. They willfully, willingly had the means to beat the minimum requirement to be uh, economically efficient with, uh, with uh, you know, going green. And what do you mean by going green? Like using like, solar uh, panels on their factories or like not and making stuff like gas No, 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 no. Emissions. And, Adopting and cleaner energy technology. Yes. So whether it's plug-in hybrids or going into EVs or anything else like yes. that. They, they 
they very much were able to beat the minimum uh, requirement and they willfully chose not to. Uh, they all talked and they're like, nah, nah, nah. You know, they, they, they were just meddling all these little companies to the side. And uh, now they got hit. I don't remember the, the fine amount, but they got hit with a nasty number uh, for for basically being the stereotypical <laughs> few. You know? I, I would equate it to Jeez. all the kids in the class agreeing not to do the homework for tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah. telling mm. the teacher... <laughs> We couldn't do it, and or you didn't assign us homework, and the teacher's like, "Wait, yeah. hold on, we did. I did." Mm. And the kids say, "No, we didn't get it." That's that's like not that. good. Jeez, yeah. that's crazy. so. Who's suing them? The state or a government? I think the or? government. No, the government. Uh, uh, th- this is if, if I, I got, I, I, I have to find. I'm scared to touch. Right now, we've been running good on my side. Nothing's hiccuping. I'm scared to touch anything. <laughs> but I'll, so I'll, I want to find the article. I'll I don't. I think this is internationally like. Uh, Mike, can involved. you look that up? I'm doing yeah, it right now. For <laughs> once, the person with <laughs> hey, the bad Jamie, internet. Can you pull that up for me? But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no government's involved. But I think like international too. Like it, this is this was uh, all, all around just hmm. bad for and this for was these companies. Not just BMW, but like Volkswagen and like other brands too. BMW, Volkswagen, um, Porsche, uh, Audi. Audi? Uh, well, okay. here well, we go. Audi in, in, BMW, in VW, Vol- Audi, and Porsche find one billion dollars in landmark case colluding over emissions. Yep. What? Yikes! Whoa! Thanks, and Jamie. They made the Taycan. Yeah, the Taycan. Yeah, the beautiful car. I yeah. think it's safe to say, you know, a company filled with lots of people they're not all on the same page about things right like i have to believe people who worked and made the tie can must believe in an electric future but i also could easily believe that there's a lot of people that are still in these companies that just kind of hate this transition and they prefer their combustion engines and so i prefer my engines combustion yeah, they. I, I could see the the disagreements going on. If you want to imagine, you know, big fans of gas cars and big fans of uh, ice and everything, that's got to be in the higher ups. That's mm-hmm. got to be in the sure. you know big legacy automakers. There's going to be a ton of those enthusiasts and fans there, more so than the general public. So that type of thing can go on. It's VW is another great example. They make tons of EVs in their good evs in my opinion i Mm. I really enjoyed the id4 i just had someone else in my personal life that i used to ride mountain bikes with by the id4 and i was like oh wow people are but i now know more people with the id4 than the model y wow so two out of your six (laughs) friends have id4s wow this is awesome i know that's that's growing so like vw (laughs) and they had their battery (laughs) day or whatever and they like I believe that there's a decent number of people at Volkswagen that believe in this transition, and I think VW is going to be one of the brands that makes it. I don't think they're going to go bankrupt and uh, not survive the transition. I, I think they're making the right calls, but there's still going to be those one or two people in the company that are like, eh, well, let's try to get past this, or who cares? Let's ignore those. And I would have got away with mission. it, too, if it wasn't for you pesky kids and that <laughs> stupid dog. Right. They got to still be there. Old man it's Jenkins. Not, there's no way that like, everybody's convinced all at once. Sure. No, you're right. It's too big of a company. There, There's there's a few, I would call them bad eggs, but there's just some, there's a few legacy employees, if you will, that just like, ah. Red foot. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, you, you, you guys got it. I'm staying right here in 1976. We have There's a- probably a lot thinking of it like, well, people seem to like these Teslas, so I guess we better have an electric option for those who want it. But let the men play with the real cars <laughs> over here. These are the actual vehicles. <laughs> we care about these too, and you know they're just looking at electric as, oh, we should offer something. Do you want your hair I to guess. grow back? Do you want your chest to be wider? Then get a darn gas vehicle. <laughs> this is a good car for your wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't Schwarzenegger say something like that? Did you see I think that for a Model S, yeah. He's like, oh, this would be a good car for my wife. It's like, <laughs> it was so sad. But he was ta- he was said that right in front of Elon too. This would be he, a good car at- for my wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were at some auto show, and it was so sad because Elon was literally just like asking people to buy the car, like verbally. 
and he was showing Arnold around, and he was like, "Oh, it's very practical, and you have great range." And he was then he just goes, "So do you think you would consider buying one, maybe?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, this would be perfect for." Martha or whatever her name is. Martha. <laughs> Why did you say that name? Why did you say that name? It'd be funny if he said the wrong name. He's like, oh, wait, that's not my fault. Oh, no. This would be perfect for a man. Which maid. one is it this week? My maid. This would be great for Martha. What did you say? Elon just <laughs> flickers. Martha. Ma- Ma- what did you say? <laughs> oh, why, 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 why did you say that name? The Tesla Nader. <laughs> no, Ar- Arnold must be interested in the electric Hummer, right? That was like his mm. thing. If he can't cook an egg on it, he's not interested in it. Well, but he'll love the Rivian camping package. No, that's too <laughs> sissy. He needs it by the sun. <laughs> that's too sissy. I don't like tank turn. I like tank. It is not a tank. <laughs> <laughs> it is too oh, sissy. Well. It's Model S still being <laughs> sold. <laughs> Perfect for, oh man. There's a lot of wives out there, Arnie. So, yeah. you know, did you I, guys see the Model S and X went up yes, in price by five thousand dollars? What the f- inflation? What's your much? theory on that? Inflation. Why do you think they did that? Hundred percent inflation at this point. I mean, it's gone up what ten thousand dollars over the past couple months. Fifteen now. 15, I would say 000? to preserve resale value, maybe. No, I don't know. Mike's got a theory. Mike, I think they're just going them. full Mr. Krabs right now. It's just all about the money. <laughs> money, 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 money. You promise these people, Krabby the Clown. But all I'm seeing is JP <laughs> <Jamie> Majinski. <laughs> I don't know why Elon has a very Mr. Krabs like the cheapness like he cares about profits and he also will like scale back on spending like we don't we decided our customers don't need lumbar support or radar <laughs> <laughs> you know, money you know how they like take people's sodas and he would suck them back into the soda fountain <laughs> the drink would go back in it's like hold put those back <laughs> My pearls! Free! Hey, man! <laughs> Rev up those hey. fires, Krabby Pants! <laughs> Me million <Where> Tesla! <laughs> It'd be like as someone so who's weird. never seen SpongeBob, oh. I am equally confused and. What? Oh, oh, come on. Okay, this is going SpongeBob. on the movie review podcast. Then. Mwah. No, I refuse. So, guy walks in to, cr- to Krusty Krab, but instead of it's Elon, rev up those factories, Tesla, because I'm here. <laughs> Can't you see we're close? <laughs> rev, up those, rev up those giga presses. He, he really <laughs> just wants to get rid of the Model S and X. He said, like, a couple years ago, right? Or maybe a year ago, that yeah. the Model S and X are basically just legacy cars that. Who said this? Elon. Elon. He said, I think it was like two years ago, maybe. He said, oh, yeah, we're just making it because we can. Yep. And so maybe that's what he's trying to get back to now. It's just, we're just making these because we can. We don't really need to. We could survive on the three and Y. Everything will be okay. And so now he's kind of just yeah. pushing back with increasing the price to like 100,000 plus just to get something that goes maybe 400 miles. To just secure really high profit margins, you think? It's just like... The luxury essentially brand. going back to phase two of this master plan which was like make a ton of money off of a mid-volume luxury vehicle and they're like well i guess the snx can still serve that purpose <laughs> so if we want some extra money just raise the price on the snx people who really want you it are still gonna pay these it these radars are cheap uh, yes actually. <laughs> you know they're, they're just ramping up for the model two right now and they're like we need money how do we get money I know, $5,000 on the Model S and X. I bet they, I do think you're right. I think it's purely way more demand for the S and X than they're comfortable with. Yeah. Because they don't really see a long-term future with the, like, Giga Texas. They're like, okay, that's going to be our bread and butter. Um, Model Y sales are going to take over the world. We're going to sell more of that than everything. Cybertruck, we have more demand than we know what to do for. Uh, Model 3... It's kind of this awkward middle child. We don't know what to do with it. You're like, wait, we could make it at Fremont forever, or we could make it way better at Texas. I don't know. we got to find a new factory location for the three on the East Coast or something, maybe. But with S&X, they're like, okay, I guess we'll keep making them. 
I guess we'll update them. Updates them. Way too many people start ordering them. Super high demand for them. They're like, oh god, we don't have time for this. Can we slow down demand somehow? Let's just... So when they refreshed them, keep in mind, before the refresh, we had the $69,420 Model S. Mm. Just oh below gosh. seventy grand. Totally. Refresh comes out. Now it's eighty, And now yesterday happens. Now it's 85. So it's more than 15 grand higher than Oof. it was last December. And yeah, it's much better. Like, I love all the changes and everything. But at the last earnings call, they also said that the refresh is cheaper to build. So they're either flat out lying about that statement or, in my opinion, the more likely, they've just decided they want to have the thickest possible profit margins on these vehicles so they can have an insane amount of profit on them and they don't really care about them being popular they're like three and y is where it's at s and x it's just like if you're willing to pay for it you're gonna pay for it yeah you're not that's the luxury that's grand. the luxury brand or not the, but that's the luxury side of things and uh people who are mm-hmm. buying them i feel like new fresh brand new straight off the the line um I don't think they like that's not a worry of theirs. They, if they go to the point of that we're going to buy an S or an X and they they already put that in their budget of comfortable like spending, I don't think they care. I think that people who are buying these things already made up their mind about the S and the X. I think mostly because like everything about the Y and the 3 is so logical about getting that you you have to want to want an S and an X to, no, I'm gonna pay that, and that's not that's not in my you know price bracket. But people who are making you know high six figures, some what like yeah yeah whatever yeah this is what you get that chart. But they, they don't care. They're leasing these things. You know? Oh my <laughs> god, yes, company vehicles and tax write offs and leases. And they don't care. I mean, yeah, the the the, the I think we'll see it hit. Ooh, I can't remember. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think we'll see it hit six figures. I see it happening. It's not the a stretch because. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it. it I. Wow, six figures <laughs> the, for the base model. The cheapest. S? I don't know about the S, but the cheapest model X you can buy new right now is ninety five thousand. Ooh, I feel bad for the model X the right non, now. Ooh. Ugh, that's the non. That's the non performance. That's just long range. Yeah. And I, to me, that kind of solidified, okay, Tesla doesn't care about that market at all because they're not going for high volume there. They're just going for thick margins, and they're like, we may not have the best quality control. We may not have the most you know, Mercedes EQS-type luxurious features, but doesn't seem to matter. People want these things. You know, They want to play cyberpunk. They want the yoke. So you all can complain about the yoke as much as you want. It doesn't seem to phase Tesla. <laughs> like that. We can't make enough of these, so whatever. I wonder if this is gonna... in preparation of the Roadster. They're seeing just how much they're Maybe. building at a loss for all these people who got it for free through the referral program. They're like, we need money. Where do we get money? <laughs> oh, I know. We'll make it back real quick. $5,000 more on every single S and X that people love and want for some reason. Mm-hmm. So it's probably, I, I think it's a combination of, yeah, maybe they build it for a smaller price than they built the original set from 2012 to 2020. But they do have Cybertrucks, a whole bunch of reservations that they have to um, satisfy along with Model 2 on the horizon, which is a low-end vehicle or low-cost vehicle, so they have to build a bunch of those, and hopefully they can get a good profit margin on that. So this is more fluff in their pillow, along with all the roadsters they have to build, both those that people have bought outright and those that got the referral reward. And then, I don't know if the semi even factors into this, but Ugh, yeah, those, <laughs> yeah, they're going to cost a pretty mm. penny. Um, so the I like the fluff term because it's like Tesla is jumping off a cliff with Cybertruck and Model 2 and the S and X right now are just putting feathers in that pillow they're going to yeah. land on. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like that meme Randy shared like here it comes. <laughs> you know with the 
<laughs> Here the tornado it comes. Horn coming behind him. Here it comes. It's like, there's ah! a big amount of spending, and they're just bracing for that impact. Like, how much cash can we hoard? How high can Bitcoin go? All of it. Before we, <laughs> before we hit the bottom here, and let's hope it, we don't break our legs on impact. Um, but that it, that brings up an interesting question, which I wonder to myself: Do you think when they start ramping Cybertruck or start ramping Model Two, whatever they end up calling it, everyone's like, he's not Model Two. Shut up! I don't care. <laughs> whatever. You it know is, what we're saying. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. Do you think Tesla could dip into the quarterly losses again once that happens? Mm. When they ramp mm. up Cybertruck and or Model, or Model Two, you know, like high volume vehicles that we're struggling to understand how they make profitably. Ooh. Yes, I question. will say yes. I, I Nick is saying yes. I, I can see. Then that I'll happening. say no. Okay. <laughs> How about and you, Mike? Mike? I'm a deer in the headlights. Since you're, not, <laughs> since you're not actively disagreeing with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to play devil's advocate however I can, because this is a good Mike question. is playing angel's advocate. Do I go with the communist <laughs> or against the communist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which one am I? Oh. I know. Wait, what? You don't remember this? Am I the commie? Randy called you a communist like... I think five episodes ago or something. Oh yeah, that's right. I did. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> and we you don't know did why what he did to that. me? He did. Uh, so I am the chat. Called him a is that like a personal attack or something? I called you a commie about something. I can't believe you, Randy. <laughs> I've derailed I this conversation. <laughs> it was relevant. Anyway, what do you it's think? It's probably because he thinks everyone should buy a Cybertruck and nothing else. <laughs> I mean, this is true. Every, everyone get one car. I mean, it would be the government the dollars. In Soviet Russia, the truck own. owns you. It would All drive the adoption is. rate of bigger parking spaces and larger <laughs> charging areas. So... In Soviet Tesla, car drive you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't go where we want you to go, it take you straight to Gulag. Everyone always goes. You always anyway, go. what was the question profitable, again? Not profitable. Oh, yeah, what do, you, what do you think, what do you Mike? Think, Mike? I, I entirely think it is possible that they could go in the red again. Um, I don't think because I mean, look at th- like companies like Ford or GM. They're legacy auto companies oh, yeah. that have been around forever. You'd think, oh, they, they've got the game down, right? No. Nope. They stopped innovating, or especially with like VW or um, Audi or Porsche, which are all VW, I just said. Um, <laughs> those are all VW companies. They're I not doing... the meme. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. But they're I, not Tesla. I, I'd have to agree with Nick. I think they How could dare go you? Again. All right, I'm Drew, sorry. take my side. We need a we need an even battlefield here. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm split. I, that's why I asked. No, no. I, I no. Sorry, you you have to choose a side it's now because two to I, one with one undecided. Let the right, past well, die. All right, I got it. I got it. Go ahead, Randy. I've got my argument. Picked. Okay, here's my argument about why they wouldn't go under. Uh, well, first I'm going to counter. Under. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, I would say under. I would say no, red. Under. Into no, no, the no, red. No, no, but I mean like into the he red. That, meant, that's what I mean. Into okay. the red. Into Got the it. red. Got it. To counter what you just said, Mike, these old legacy automobiles, like you said, they do not innovate. And they're so big that they sometimes lose eye on the ball and do things that get fined a billion dollars. Tesla is small enough, new enough, and innovative enough with all these eager minds that want to work there. They all have a unified vision about it. And when it comes to the point of either Cybertruck or Model 2. They have done so well with how they managed the money, knew when to do uh, the raises. Everything about last year showed the genius of the business side of it. Bitcoin. And they continue to show the <laughs> genius side of it uh, by even doing weird things like raising, the, raising money here and there because they know it's like, well, we can't actually afford it. Uh, at the end of the day, it is a company and they're going to protect the bottom line. And it's small enough that they're able to have more quality control over that bottom line of it. So when it does come to the point of mass rollout of cheaper vehicles, I trust and I feel that they will have the, uh, the, the, that balancing act. The other side will be more than capable of holding down the Ford and keeping everything still afloat, not keeping them going into the red. I think My that's overly was, optimistic. Go ahead, Drew. Oh, go ahead. No, no, it's your turn, Drew. No, I like, no, no, no. Overly so, optimistic. I, I want to know how to argue you, so 
Go ahead. What? <laughs> oh, okay, fine then. Um, I, I think as we uh, as we do another big production ramp similar to Model Three, um, Tesla will obviously have some efficiencies in place, and they know how to do it. But I think that the big problem is going to be sourcing materials this time. Um, as we've seen kind of the global supply chain fall apart, um, whether it's with chips or raw materials or whatever, um, it's hard for companies to find what they need. And anyone can make something on a small scale, but in order to do something at a big scale, it just is a whole different problem. Elon has said that many times. Um, and being being able to source all the materials for the Model 2, like, the Model 2 is probably going to be the most popular vehicle since, like, the Model T back in the day. Like, a, a fully electric, Tesla fully self-driving, a capable um, EV that has zero emissions and by a company that's really cool and starting in the twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 range. Like, and has that's going to be a hot, that's gonna be a hot tick, uh, ticket item. Sorry, what did you say, Mike? I said also comparable performance as well. It's going to be almost yeah. like a Ford Focus true exactly right. yeah and it's gonna it's gonna be like the most popular car of all time in my ever so humble opinion in 2021 as we're talking about this um and being able to source all of those materials is not going to come cheaply and uh, assuming you know things don't get better which i don't know we've been doing this for like a year and a half now so we'll, we'll see um and things have only seemed to get worse on the supply chain side at least as far as people not being able to find the important things um I think that's going to be a big problem, and I think because of that, they're going to need to pay a little bit of premium on some of the uh, materials that they use. Um, you know, specific chip components. Like, you know, they say that the new Model S has a PS5 chip in it, right? Like, well, all the PS5 GPU, people yeah. are now mad at you, um, <laughs> right? They're still waiting for their PS5s. Um, and I, I think similar similar issues, like individual components are on the standard side going to stay fairly consistent, but you're going to have like these outliers that are just like absorbently expensive and absorbently difficult to get. But like, for some reason you can't make the vehicle without it. You know, you need the whatever widget, you know, you need a dozen of these little widgets that are very difficult to get. So I think that's going to bring up the price of production. And then also where are they going to be building this? I mean, model Y in, in, uh, in the gigafactory in, uh, Austin, is taking up most of the floor space. Um, they don't. They don't seem to have a ton of floor space available. So I think they're going to have to do some kind of build out to uh, create more floor space to create the Model Two in a mass manufactured kind of fashion. That's going to cost a lot of money. If they want to well, build it in America, yeah, I, I would and, argue that they're building. They're focusing on it in Berlin and in mm -hmm. China because they can make cheap and affordable vehicles, and they're building the factories from the ground up. Yeah. So I think they've already taken into account that they can make it, or at least we've seen in China that they're making a yeah, whole other Yeah, well, they, they can throw up another building, but I'm just saying it's going to be a little bit of extra cost. And my final sure. point there is, to be completely honest, like Tesla's earnings have not been overly positive. I mean, they've been positive for the past, whatever, two years at this point, I guess. They haven't been in the negative, but we're not seeing them bring in the orders of the tens of you know, between 10 and a hundred billion dollars in revenue every year. Um, so it's kind of tight, I guess. And if you're and they're very careful about their expenses. So, you know, assuming, assuming they can keep their expenses tight, it'll be close. But if they can't keep their expenses really tight, I see it going into the red. Drew. So it, you bring up lots of good points. It's the supplier ones being a good one. Although I would argue, uh, Tesla, I'm going to blame a lot of the Model 3 losses on Fremont in particular. I think that because Tesla had not done super high volume yet, um, they were untested and uh, there was a lot of new ideas they were hoping to implement, like the you know almost completely autonomous assembly line with almost no people, and then Elon quickly learned that wasn't really feasible. And now we've seen with the Model Y ramp and with Giga Shanghai, that Tesla has kind of learned their lesson on what a factory needs to do to be able to mm. be profitable and successful. And the margins on Shanghai look really good, and I expect very similar margins from Berlin and Texas. And the Model Y, with all of its reduced reduced parts and reduced complexity, secures revenue as well um, so that they don't burn money on every car sold for a long time, which is, I think, what they were doing with the three. They were like, it's not really profitable, but hopefully it gets there eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I know that Tesla doesn't have extremely high margins, but to be fair, no, no automaker does really right now. Pretty much all the major ones are either burning through cash or burning through less cash. And Tesla is one of the few that's able to not necessarily go in the red. Um, but there, it's safe to say the last two years have been much, much better than the previous two years before that, where they were dropping billions of dollars a quarter and not seeing that return. But I think the main a uh, trick up Tesla's sleeve that other automakers don't have is their services model. Um, Tesla mm, is going to be, I think, really comfortable with the Model 2 selling you back rear heated seats or selling you back software locked features. It doesn't just have to be heated seats. But I think by the time Model 2 is out, this is a stretch. I know it's because two weeks. But I think by the time the Model 2 comes out, <laughs> FSD will have a subscription option. And it'll probably be, I'm Maybe. not saying it'll be level five or even level three, but it'll be much better than it is now. And I could imagine the services revenue of the subscription model being really strong and Tesla finding easier ways of making people be able to just turn it on as you're driving and then you pay for it by the mile or whatever. And other car companies aren't really looking at their their customers with revenue model with that type of services revenue in mind whereas tesla i think is thinking a bit more of an apple you know with tesla insurance and fsd turning into a subscription model they're going to price it to optimize the revenue best possible like if they make it too high not enough people do it if they make it too low they don't make much money on it so they're going to figure out and probably as much as they change their 3 and Y price and their S and X price, I think the FSD subscription will fluctuate a bit too if they go too high at first and maybe they're like, okay, maybe we'll just have a, a road trip option that's cheaper and they'll maybe have a tiered system or what, whatever. There was some rumors of that floating around. Um, and I think that will allow them to, even if the margins on the Model 2 are really thin, through the services, they can kind of make it back because people won't be thinking about dropping ten thousand dollars on full self driving. They'll just think, "Oh, this road trip, sixty bucks here, thirty bucks here," and it's just kind of careless little occasional spending that over time adds up. And Tesla gets to collect the profits on that. And just because they've seemed to have ramped a far more popular vehicle than the Model Three, which is the Model Y, without going in the red, ramping that up in, and they're working on two factories simultaneously without dipping into the red buying the property building it out paying the construction crews paying for all this germany legislation and those factories aren't producing yet and they haven't gone in the red yet so i'm, I'm pretty confident model 2 will probably need either new building or a whole new factory uh mm -hmm. for the u.s in yeah. china i could see them tacking it on to shanghai but um you know there was talks of them coming back to tulsa oklahoma at Ooh, some boy. point or or he did mention in the next four or five years putting a factory on the east coast so there's i'm sure Giga virginia Texas is not the last or virginia beach yeah <laughs> i'm sure uh giga texas is not the last giga factory in the when's, u.s so when's giga new york city i mean we've seen the cyber truck driving around i've heard real estate is just so there affordable. is giga new york yeah no new york solar, city the solar yeah, and that's the solar in new for. york city like you want in manhattan yeah. Yeah. Elon <laughs> will not. Spot. I refuse it's to. It's a Wait, is is a Giga New York actually going to be a thing? Well, it's already it is, there. It, is a it, thing. It does solar. There's been a Giga it's New in, York. No, I meant city. I'm sorry, city. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm well, that's no, way too that's expensive. Place. That's, that's like, yeah, that's like oh, I was about to say, like, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> But it'd be funny, though. It's a skyscraper, happen. and the raw materials go on the top, and cyber trucks roll out the bottom. <laughs> it's a factory line, but vertically, you got to exactly. go vertically yeah. integrated. <laughs> vertically integrated. <laughs> It's Vert vertically wow. integrated. <laughs> Tesla, you should call That's us. We've got some cool. great ideas. Oh, yeah. my God. That, that'd be the yeah, equivalent. I'm not, I'm not of... super confident. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the smart idea of putting a gigafactory in Manhattan would be equivalent of trying to make that factory in San Francisco, like trying to take Fremont and yeah, put yeah. in San Francisco. It's, it's almost not like work. they do that in the Bay Area. Yeah, I was going to say. It's almost as bad as an idea as their first factory. <laughs> <laughs> they needed something. Anyways. You got to start you're, somewhere. You're going to say, Drew. I was going to say I don't feel super confident about my position. I, it's like 55, 45%. Like I could easily. You bring up a good point about Nick, the services, though. Mm -hmm. I didn't Nick think about that. But Nick is very correct in that Tesla 
it's it's almost safe to say that the Model 2 would be on such a different level, kind of like how the transition of mass producing S and X to 3 was a big transition. It might be safe to say the transition from making Ys and Cybertrucks to Model 2 will be another big leap and bound of like, well, we've produced hundreds of thousands of vehicles, but we've never produced you know, multi-millions of vehicles within a single year of one model. Um, not sure how drastic that learning curve may be. Maybe it's not as bad as we think. Maybe you just have to get the parts down. The whole front and back is one press, you know, <laughs> structural pack. It's just minimize it's the just interior one press even further. The entire car, the battery pack, the like, <laughs> it's just one press. Probably no gear stocks. I'll no, no, throw no, that no out gear there. stocks. Mm. Probably no radar. Safe to say radar's no radar. toast on the Cybertruck. Um, probably toast on the Roadster. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, I could see them just going super-duper minimal with everything. There's no scroll wheels. <laughs> There's no uh Don't take away my scroll Because wheels. airbags are so safe. I like my scroll There's wheels. <laughs> He talked about that on Joe Rogan, didn't he? About the seatbelts? Seat, yep. Seatbelts were redundant now. It, you could sit down and it would know if you're a boy or a girl and how to deploy the airbags appropriately. <laughs> it didn't ask, Randy. It hey. didn't ask for the pronouns. Uh, uh, no, I don't care. It, it didn't ask uh, uh, what you, what's your ge- this gender sex thing. It'll know if you have oh, boy bits or girl bits and how to protect your bits. I just heard wait. <laughs> Are you no, assuming I have a weight, Drew? Hey, I, man. My is, weight your, is, non- is your Tesla seat assuming your gender? I'm just repeating <laughs> That's what the headline. Joe, I mean, That's I'm just repeating what Elon said. It, it, the airbags will, because you know, if if you are female or if you have female bits, then airbags will deploy differently to protect yourself. Randy's found okay. a way to cancel himself every show. <laughs> I know. Every show. He's got something. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what else could they take out? I was thinking a uh, glass roof. Yeah. That no, we're already past the hour 15 mark. Nobody's listening. They don't care. I think I think a body roof might be a good way to get the price down. Mm. I like the glass roof. I think it, I like it definitely gives it more space. No, 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 no. no, no. Like okay, it. so here's the benefit. The question. benefit is it gives more space to the vehicle, even if it's smaller in there compared to like a Civic or something. Okay, hold on now. Yeah, but money. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the money. <laughs> I forget. If Mr. you remember <laughs> back when they originally released the Model 3, <laughs> they had a few renders of a hardtop, non glass option. And people were assuming there that was? it was going to be the thirty-five thousand dollar one that got the hard-topped Model Three. And I thought there was talk of cloth seats as well. There was. I there think was. there was also cloth. Yeah, yeah. They actually they produced that as well. Yeah. They did. I never saw. At them. least in the S, there's cloth seats. In the three, I think they made a few prototypes with cloth seats. And then yeah, the same way the it. S had the, like the 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 hard roof with maybe like well the sun roof only. There was a few S's with body roofs. Yes. So, so with the with the metal roof, Drew. Though I would I would say it's probably not cheaper when you equate everything. Um, mm. The glass roof is literally just a piece of glass, and they just yeah. glue it in what? there. And they make they yeah. make this piece of glass. Excuse you me. Know, <laughs> exactly. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Wait, oh don't my god! Glue. I glass gotta go check glass, something real quick. <laughs> and glass is glass. That's the saying. I'm pretty sure. Sometimes they don't glue it. Yeah. Glass and sometimes they don't glue it. Sometimes but you get a free sun or yeah, free sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when your dad was in the Model Y, he was like, "Can I push really hard on the roof?" And he was Please like, "Please don't." I wouldn't. <laughs> this is an early Vin Y. I've got no clue if you push on something, it's gonna break. Let's not try. <laughs> But what were you gonna say, Nick? Yeah, I'm but sorry. with with a conventional style roof, you have like many layers that need to be assembled, and it's the assembly costs that are gonna kill you. the The actual material is probably cheaper for a hard hard roof that doesn't have a window in it. Um, but you you have the the paint on the top, you have the metal roof, you have the mm. uh, in, installation pieces, and then you have that in, in inside headliner. And then on that headliner, it's which is a big piece of molded plastic, which Elon hates. And then you know, no, they throw all that out. On that, it's just raw oh, it's, metal. Oh, it's just raw <laughs> metal. Oh, okay. Well, there's no fine. interior. I guess. I guess. <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, but then on and then underneath that you have everything. a layer of foam, and then underneath that you have the felt that you see, and it's like that is a lot of 
like assembly time and production time materials that could just be swapped well. out for literally one piece of glass. And as Elon said, the best piece is no piece, and the best part is one piece. I'm pretty sure he said that somewhere. <laughs> that was the best part is no part, or no the best no part. The best system is no system. No roof. <laughs> no roof. <laughs> Just convertible. All, Ooh, all I feel like I'm high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have this, no this idea. This explains a lot. Tesla just makes the McLaren speed tail, where there's just nothing in front of you or on top of the you. The paint was a good argument, though. Yeah. I didn't think about that. You have to paint the roof. Yeah. yeah. There's no glass. Glass saves money. It's true. So, uh, yeah, I would agree that is glass is glass. more expensive. What? But when you in, in, include all the other costs that come with the normal roof, I'd, I'd imagine Tesla would. Because the Model 3. Right, it's supposed to be an affordable car, and somehow they they discovered between the time they designed it to when they started producing it that it was either the same cost or cheaper to do a glass roof. So, I don't know. And I think this oh, is hold on one more thing ahead. on the glass roof. I think that's a huge selling feature for the Model Three, honestly, and the Model Y. Oh, and the Y. Because people people go into a thirty forty thousand dollar car expecting Mm -hmm. you know a small little moon roof with like a little thingy and whatever but like they sit into the model y or model three and they're just like and the first question i get is hey does it open oh yeah that's what drew said i I would argue father-in-law it's a great selling point for the three and y Tone changes everything, but could you imagine? <laughs> even but if, not the two. <laughs> even even if even if the window had a thicker side pillars, could you imagine the side the 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 Tesla's all about moving the higher end stuff down. You know, FSD started out as a Model S thing, and then they brought it down to the Model Three. You know, obviously FSD isn't ready, but you know they brought they're bringing stuff down to the lower prices mm-hmm. and. If they could, that would disrupt the market, right? Like, your Ford Fiesta doesn't have an all-glass roof. And if they're competing, at least price-wise, with the Ford Fiesta, and they have a <laughs> glass roof, the ability to drive themselves, it's just, it put them in a whole nother league. Yeah, I just, like, imagine Elon looking at the Fiesta, like, we're going to destroy that thing. <laughs> 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 that yes. Fiesta does toast. I know Mike disagrees with me, but my uh, theory on how they're going to get the price so low is there's going to be a one size fits all. No, it's going to be no. one battery, no. one motor. No. There's no long I range. There's that. no performance. I can see that. It's no. just going to be. Keep in mind, nope. they said it would be lithium iron phosphate, and as of now lithium iron phosphate is only available on standard range vehicles they don't make long range iron phosphate and standard range iron phosphate so and it's supposed to be smaller i assume it'd be smaller it'd be weird if it was bigger than a model 3 and I, the iron phosphate cells take up more space um, because the energy density is less so to me it makes perfect sense that it'll just be one range option there's no tiers it's like what maybe like iphone se it's like three color options only one pair of tires <laughs> you know i could just totally not see two that. pairs one pair no no just the whole configurator is one page no scrolling no it's just no sc- the order button you click order and it's just here's the specs <laughs> here's your credit card you know where's your credit card info? maybe fsd like no. the cyber truck yeah, okay fine that's that's just a, that's in a software thing you can do it on the screen later it's not a part of the check you do it all through the app oh gotcha I, I, I could totally see, see that. Like that that's like total model T. Why vibes. not, Mike? Mm, people, Why am I wrong? People like options. And I feel like Model three, that's their option. N- no. <laughs> that's the bad argument. Poor people deserve options more range? too, Drew. That's a bad argument. You want more range? Get a big well, if beggars can't be choosers, right? That's the whole expression. <laughs> beggars can be choosers. I've seen it on Twitter. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Well, beggars can be whiners, but <laughs> if you want a cheap car, like if I'm like, hey, I want a 400 mile range EV that's under 40 grand, Tesla's gonna go, sorry. So if you want a 300 mile range EV, Tesla's gonna say, yep, get the three, get the Y. Yeah, but it has model twos for it has to hit 300 miles because that's Elon's golden range no, number. No, 250. Well, he said around. He said, well, okay, so he also said close two weeks ago. Hold on. I just I know what you're talking about at Battery Day. They said that they believed the lithium iron phosphate batteries could get around 300 miles of range. So I I round down on that one. I'm I'm thinking 280, 290. 
comfortable amount of range. A range where you could drive anywhere in the U.S. and still be fine with supercharging and everything. You're telling me Elon's fine with a 17% difference between 300 miles and 250 miles? Well, they brought back the standard range Y in China, so... And that goes, you know, 250 or whatever. I'm still kind of salty that they brought it back in China. <laughs> <laughs> Why? China. I wish you could buy the Chinese model here. here because it's... They confirmed it's the iron phosphate batteries, which I, I think are better. That's like my perfect battery. High cycle life, and you can charge it to 100% every day. That's, that's perfect. I love that. So the range isn't as high, but you're not capped at 80% all the time. You can go all the way up. Well, I cap it at 90, and I get yelled at if I go above 90. It says, because <laughs> you're hurting your battery by doing this. Are you sure you don't want to readjust it? I'm like, ah, fine, I guess. Fine, fine. Thankfully, so everything is about 10% battery change from wherever I am in the bay to my house. So mm-hmm. even if I charge 100%, yeah. I only get to 90% or a little bit less when I get home right. or to work or anything else. So... So do you think Model 2 will have two sizes of the iron phosphate packs? I think so. No, or I'm... at least some other option. I, I don't think it's just going to be one page where it's like, FSD button, order, done. <laughs> I, I think it's going to at least have another set of... It's going to be like, really weird. The Cybertruck and the Model 2 might be very similar in their order pages with maybe one yeah, or two rims, an FSD button, and then probably my opinion, at least two different trims or battery ranges. Mm. So you get like... So you could see there not being a performance. Uh, or just having standard and performance. It depends on what you call performance, I guess. Um, would it be the... It has a spoiler. The, <laughs> the sport option. That's all that counts. Because I, I don't know if you could That's call... Would that be dual motor? Yeah, probably rear-wheel drive and then... Well, yeah, I don't think it'd have a tri motor. So, yeah, I think there'd be a single motor. No, and a dual my motor. prediction is it'll be rear wheel drive only. Okay. No dual motor option. I think there'll be a dual motor option. Hmm. I'm going. To this day, there's not been an iron phosphate Tesla with two motors. No, but to this day, they haven't made a pickup truck mass market or mass production <laughs> or a Roadster mass production. And that thing crushes Bugattis, Koenigseggs, Paganis, everything. I'm glad we disagree on this. It'll be really interesting when it happens in ten years. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. I'll to be I'll be fascinated or two to weeks. see how they or two weeks whenever it's ready. <laughs> Whichever comes first. Yeah, they're gonna give you the arrow wheels, but without the caps. <laughs> That's too expensive. They take that part off. <laughs> and then in the performance version, they give you the caps because <laughs> they can't take Instead the range. Of, uh, Instead yeah. of new battery, it's just the it's they just give caps. you aero caps. <laughs> On the Model Three, you have the choice between aero wheels and sport wheels. On the Model Two, you'll be able to buy a vehicle with no t- tires attached, and you can spend extra, and they'll add the tires. <laughs> Ew. Gross. <laughs> you can buy it. It's like supply your own tires. They go full Apple. Mm. Almost full they just deliver it on your doorstep on wooden blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting there, and you have to. No, it's Nikea. It you buy it from Nikea. Tesla's going to partner with Nikea, <laughs> and they'll just ship you all the parts, and you build there it yourself. You, you are the factory. <laughs> That's the <laughs> new the design. Of you are the new Tesla factory. Build it. <laughs> you are the Gigafactory. You build it. It's almost like you you're buying plots of Randy. land in Sweden or wherever, but now it's buying Giga your- Randy. Yeah. Giga Randy. Giga Dinga Durgan. Giga Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing thoughts, gents? Uh, yeah. I cannot wait to see what the side view mirrors on the Cybertruck look like because the side view mirrors on the Model Y, in my wife's opinion, are too small, and I kind of agree. So if they're yeah, they small, small side mirrors on the Cybertruck, it ain't going to look good for at least our household on the Cybertruck adoption. Probably. Yeah. So, I, I do I do have a closing thought. Normally I don't, but uh, did you guys see that the Model 3 beat out a Turbo a Taycan Turbo S, a Porsche Taycan Turbo S, in the uh, Japan EV Grand Prix? Um, normally I don't bring up news articles like this, 
but I've, mm-hmm. I've actually seen the vehicle that beat that. I've seen that winning EV before. Um, oh. that's It's uh, sponsored by Unplugged Performance, and yeah. in the Denver Tesla Club, um, Eric, uh, he has a YouTube channel. Um, he His old Model 3 was, I don't know, he gave it to Unplugged Performance to do a bunch of like mods for it, and that's the one I'm like, that's kind of cool. That, that's awesome. Uh, you know, the the Porsche Taycan might might have the zero to sixty, but it does not have any endurance. <laughs> really, poor thing. I thought they loved the endurance on the Taycan. Mm. It's interesting. Well, uh, people buying the Porsche, I guess, aren't probably not buying it for that. <laughs> well, the Porsche is also two hundred thousand dollars, so you know, there's yeah, slight that's price why difference there. Mm. <laughs> minor, minor price difference. Fair enough. That's cool. I didn't know you saw that. That's awesome. I didn't need it until it I was looking at the article. I was like, oh, hmm. I know that car. Randy's like, you see that Cybertruck? <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> it's bigger in person. Mm. You see that and dent? I've heard that Never before. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, speaking of innuendos, uh, my side mirrors are just fine. They're yeah, not they well, yes, the on the three, the I would say the They're side mirrors on the three small. are fine. But the side mirrors on the Y, they need My to be My side mirrors are bit. not small at all. They're very huge. Okay. Quite frankly, probably the best <laughs> side back. mirrors I've ever had. The best. The best. The best. Well okay. done. Frankly, Great. the best. Quite frankly, the best. Okay. I mean, you look at Wonderful. all these other side mirrors, and they're just they're, they're very small in comparison. But mine, huge. <laughs> let, me, huge. let me drink some water here. Thank you, everyone. I'm worried about the Cybertruck. Week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Almost made it. Bye. Almost made it. <laughs> <laughs>